Hello everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome again to another live episode with T Posh. It is truly, truly a blessing to be here with you guys tonight. Um, I am so honored that you guys are taking the time out to um, share a little moment with me tonight. I have some amazing, amazing information and studies to share with you guys that is uh, really, really going to clear up a lot of thoughts and aspects that you have in regards to the African biomineral balance. Um, hi, oh, I got all traces, four traces in a row. That is amazing. That's a sign. You traces are some powerful women. All four of you, all the, tra that's crazy. Four traces um, logged in at the same time right behind each other. I, I'm going to take that as a real positive sign from you Tracy's tonight. <laughs> um, but we're just going to give it a few more minutes to get some people, you know, to log in and get settled. I know a lot of people have been very, very excited about this live feed tonight. I'm good, Tracy. I'm very well blessed. <laughs> um I know you guys have been excited because I have been super excited and I believe in energy. So whatever kind of energy you put out, that's pretty much what you're going to get back. But I'm going to tell you, you guys something. This is going to be amazing. This is going to actually open your eyes to a whole new way of thinking about this Africa, um, Africa, African biomineral balance. And I hope you guys have your notebooks, you take down some notes. Um, ask questions. If I don't answer your question during the live tonight, I definitely will be responding to um, some of the comments after uh, to make sure that I am able to answer everyone's questions. Um, but I just, I'm, I'm just so filled and I'm so excited about what God has um, to share with all of us tonight. And I'm just honored that he has allowed me to be the voice of reason. Um, this is all a part of me just allowing God to do what he needs to do with me. Um, that's my everyday prayer. God, hey, just use me as you see fit. And um, that's what I do. So um, just a few minutes. We're going to give it a start. Um, just want to let some other people just chime in real quick so nobody don't miss some of the uh, important messages. I like that. Hashtag I'm woke. She said, nope, y'all sleep. I'm not sleep. <laughs> and most of my people here, I, I know you're not sleep anymore. And we're waking up. And that's why you're inviting some of your sleep friends and family members to these live sessions and to my page, exploring my page, because it is truly a way for us to wake up. We have to unite. We have to come together. And um, when you understand what I'm going to tell you tonight, you're going to see exactly why this is more important. And I almost guarantee you that some of you are going to be so fired up. You're going to be ready to go explore this and tell everybody about this tomorrow. And even after the video tonight, because I got some amazing, amazing um, news for you. All right. So I got some um, good people here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started a little bit. First and foremost, um, I want to explore some of the whys. Most of you or all of you, you are not here by accident. You are not here by chance. This is a divine journey for you to be here to listen to what God needs to express to you so you can understand his word. You can understand his message. You can understand what we're going through in this country as a people right now. And you can understand the importance of the African environmental fast It's way more than what we think it is. Um, some of you are thinking like, uh, um, why would anybody want to subject themselves to this? I've received several messages like, what is this African biomineral balance? Why do I need to do this? Some of your friends and family telling you that you're crazy. Like, what? No fool. You're not in. You're going to die. What is you doing? This is impossible. And most of us, even myself, felt like me not eating food for uh, 30 days, 90 days, 60 days. Um, no, that, that can't happen. And that's not going to happen. Most of us have said that to ourselves. And most of our family and friends is looking at us like we're crazy because they want to know how in the world do we feel that we're supposed to be healthy without eating food. And they're like, I mean, you're going to be mal malnutrition if you're not eating your food. Like, this is just too hard because I love my macaroni and cheese. I love my potatoes. And this is just too hard. And this is not for me. These are the type of things that's running through a lot of people's minds. 
And by the time you are done with this video tonight, you're going to understand why it's important and why it's important for everybody else. And it's going to give you a different understanding of how to think about this African environmental balance. So understand your whys and it's okay not to know. But until you understand what the whys is and what the purpose of all of this is, until you understand that, you may not be successful. And you may not get into a point where you can get your all your, your entire heart into this, like your heart and your drive and your discipline. And you can just completely change your life. And when you know why, why are you doing this? Why is it important for us to do this as people? I mean, why is it important for me to just stop eating foods and, and get off some of the things that I love and the things that I've been told that benefits me all of my life? Why in the world would I subject myself to not eating food and fasting for a period of time and changing everything that I eat, which is this is all I've eaten all of my life? And these are the questions that I want to answer for you tonight. Where do I get my studies from? First of all, let me tell you, beyond Dr. Sabi, I have been studying about um, history for a very long time, um, maybe 20 years and I, it's a passion of mine. I love to know why things happen. Even as a young child, if something was going on in my family, I want to know why. Or something was going on with me, why does this happen? Because I believe when we go through things in life, if you keep repeating the same thing over and over again, it will continue to repeat itself until you fix it. Let me repeat that one more time. If you are going through the same thing over and over and over again in your life, it will continue to repeat itself until you fix it. So I always been keen into knowing the why this is happening and why this is important. And that's what, you know, led me into this Dr. Sabi journey. So I'm going to tie in a little bit of history that I've been researching for the last 20 years, tie it all up into Dr. Sabi, because what we need to understand is Dr. Sabi is really actually the solution to our problems. Everything that we're going through in this world today, Dr. Sabi has the solution. And once you hear what I have to say and how I demonstrate it to you tonight, you will kind of understand why he is the solution. So what and why must I try this African bio-mineral fast? Let me explain something to you. Genetics, okay? Genetics is real, guys. Let's talk about how real it is. I'm going to explain to you about my genetic family where I come from a little bit. But when I explain to you about my genetic history and my genetic family, I want you to think about what's going on genetically in your family. Just put yourself in the picture and focus on what you may have to deal with or dealing with all your life. So years ago, maybe a few years ago, my mom did the 21 day, uh, 21 and me challenge. Okay. With this challenge, what she did, she did, not a challenge, I'm sorry, she did the DNA test with 21andMe. And in this DNA test, she discovered that my ancestors, where the traits, the genetics that I come from, literally, from my mom's side, is from the Banju tribe in Africa. So, you know me, I want to know the why. So I went searching, Banju tribe in Africa? Sure enough, when I pulled up the Banjo tribe in Africa, these people had these facial structures in their face, and it was just like, I thought these people was my family for real. That let me know right there that, okay, genetics is, is got to definitely be some truth to some genetics. And let's explore it again. Now, my great-great-grandfather, I was told, was over 500 pounds, and he had hundreds, hundreds, guys, of tumors and cysts all over his body. Now, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, she died of a tumor in her stomach. Her sister died of a tumor. A few more of her sisters died of tumors, breast cancer. I have an aunt that has beat breast cancer stage four twice. She's my superhero. My mother, has also had her breast cancer experience where she did the double mastectomy and I'm so happy and proud of her for that. Um, I have an aunt that has really bad 
uh, issues with, you know, diabetes, where it can get really bad and out of control sometimes. So what does all that say about me? If I have all these women, and that's just the name of few, if I have all these women and these people in my family that's getting sick with tumors, cysts, diabetes, whatever the case may be, that tells me straight from the top that I'm in line to get something. Like something is going to happen. And we wonder, why does that happen? Why if they do it, I have to do it. So I'm going to explain that to you too. What happens is your mother teach you what she knows. Your parents teach you what they know. So if your mom like ice cream and her baby is born and she love her baby and she want to reward her baby, she going to reward her baby with some ice cream. So then baby likes ice cream. I mean, let's just think about it. If everybody in my family love bread, Thanksgiving, Lord, our mercy, you got the macaroni and cheese, you got the bread, you got the dressing, you got everything laid. We love bread. As a child, I used to take bread and ball it up in my hand and just eat it. And my niece, 16 years old right now, I believe she still do it. But when she was younger, she did the same thing. It is genetics, guys. And it follows you. Your DNA don't change. Whatever your family you know, know, or whatever knowledge you have, you teach it to your child and you teach it to your child and you teach it to your child and it goes on. So now with the fact that genetics is real, we have all have a certain makeup of, about ourselves, but genetics is not the same for everybody. It's not the same for every race. It's not the same for every animal. So I'm going to give you another analogy. Okay, this is where it kind of get deep for me. And I'm going to give you two analogies, but the first analogy I need to give it to you so that way you can understand the second analogy. With the first analogy, let's talk about how genetics are different. And I'm going to explain it to you exactly the way, not exactly, but similar to the way that Dr. Sebi explained it in one of his videos. Let's think about the gorilla. Okay. The gorilla lives in Africa in a rainforest. The gorilla is one of the strongest animals there is. It's huge, it's strong, and it is extremely smart. A gorilla can outsmart some humans. But the gorilla don't eat meat. The gorilla eat berries. The gorilla eat herbs. It eat plants. It does not eat meat. The gorilla is eating things that nature that grows in the rainforest. It's tropical, it's sunny, and, and that's what the gorilla needs to sustain its life, minerals. Hope I don't get too boring. I'm going to get there and you're going to understand. But you need to hear what I'm saying tonight in order for you to understand. So the gorilla is in the, in the rainforest. It's tropical, it's sunny. He eats his berries. That's his minerals. That's what the gorilla needs to sustain life. And to live his best life. Now, let's think about the polar bear. The polar bear is up in the Arctic somewhere where it's real, real cold. You know, us Florida people is not even finna try to go there. Yeah, no. So, the polar bear is living in the Arctic where it's freezing cold. It's ice everywhere. So, what does the polar bear need to sustain their life? The polar bear is given a coat to be able to warm their bodies, to be able to sustain in a cold environment. So how do they do that? They eat meat. I don't know. Some of you may remember on my last post, I said you sometimes you have to eat certain foods based on the season. For you meat eaters, it's best to eat meat in the wintertime. Why? Because when you eat meat, it's heavy. It warms the inside. It does not digest very quickly. It warms the inside and it helps the polar bears to cope with the cold weather. Now, let's also think about the pig. The pig can live in any kind of environment, I think, as far as the weather. But the pig lives in the pig stock. They usually eat. Use the restroom, play in the same area. Unless somebody is a pet and they're cleaning the pig. Now, you cannot take the polar bear from the cold atmosphere and imagine putting the polar bear in the rainforest with the gorilla. 
the polar bear is not going to be able to survive too long in the rainforest with the gorilla. One, it's too hot for that polar bear, okay? And if it ain't no meat in the rainforest and he try to eat the gorilla, the gorilla ain't having it, so that might be a fight in itself right there. So that's not going to work. And even if you were to imagine in your brain to see a polar bear living in the, rain in the, in the rainforest, it's like, uh, that can't happen. That's not nature. That's not the natural order of things. Neither can you take the gorilla and put the gorilla up there in all that ice and think that the gorilla going to be able to live his, sustain his best, you know, life and have the minerals that he needs. One, because ain't no berries growing in the cold, ain't no trees growing in the cold, in the cold and the gorilla don't eat meat. Like the polar bear, the polar bear eating seals and eating fish and, and you know, so where in the world is the herbs and the greens going to grow at in the cold anyway? So how is the gorilla going to be able to sustain in the Arctic with the polar bear? It's impossible. We, I mean, it's just impossible to do that. I mean, like, just think about it. Common sense. So now, now let's take the polar bear and the gorilla and you think you're going to put the polar bear and the gorilla in the same pig stars with the pig? Uh, no. <laughs> That's not going to work. Ain't nobody going to survive. First of all, I would think that the polar bear is probably going to try to eat the pig. And then the polar bear going to probably try to eat the gorilla. And the gorilla going to get in. And the gorilla going to be like, nah, you ain't finna eat me. And that's it. Because all the gorilla want is some berries and some leaves and some herbs. So that way everybody can sustain their own life. Everybody has their own minerals in life of what they need to sustain in their body. Everybody does. So that's that one analogy. Just think about it. I mean, all of them are animals. The gorilla, the polar bear, and the pig, they're animals. But they're not genetically the same. Neither is people. Just think about it. So let's go into that next analogy. Chinese people... Mediterranean people, even the European people. What does Chinese people eat? I've been doing my research, so I'll be looking down and get my notes, okay, so I can make sure I got this right. The Chinese people don't eat the same thing that we eat, first of all, okay? They eat very different. I'm sure y'all know that. The Chinese people get their minerals from things like rice, fruits, vegetables, soy products, because they need protein, fish, you know, so they eat these things, things that have energy and oil and things like that. They, have, they also use herbs in China. I don't think you're going to go nowhere, correct me if I'm wrong, in China and see nobody eat no fried chicken, no cornbread, no chitlins, and, and no pork chops. I just don't see that happening. Correct me if I'm wrong. But that's what the Chinese people do. And we all respect what the Chinese people do. Now, let's go on to the Mediterranean people. Because I know I went to Barcelona, Spain. And that was one of the best trips of my life. And the food was different. So was the weather. Okay? So for the Mediterranean people, what do they need for their minerals in their body? Well, they need things like fruits and vegetables, cereal, nuts, Different breads, fish, olive oil. Uh, they have a low intake of dairy products, low intake of red meat, processed meat, sweets. They don't too much like sweets. So they think they think you know eat things Mediterranean, things that might be light salad, you know, just things like that. That's the Mediterranean diet, and, and I'm pretty sure y'all know these too. But I'm gonna round it up in a minute. So now. Now we know what the Chinese people and what their minerals are, and we know what the Mediterranean people and what their minerals are. Let's go into the European people, let's sort of say. Well, the Europe European people, their minerals that they need for their life is magnesium, calcium, zinc. Okay, that's what their minerals are. So, what is zinc? Zinc is things like beef chuck roast, crabs, beef patties, breakfast cereal, lobsters, pork chop, baked beans, chicken, yogurt, cashews, uh, cheese, milk, almonds. Okay, so that's just, that is, I want to make sure, I, that's just zinc. Okay, so they also need selenium, um, sardines, ham, shrimp, turkey, uh, cottage cheese, 
eggs, baked beans, oatmeal. That's what they need to sustain in their body because that's their genetic makeup, right? So then now we go to selenium and the last thing I said that they needed was calcium. Okay, they need calcium, which is like sardines and soy milk and orange juice and uh, salmon and ice cream and, you know, cabbage and bread and tortillas and all and Mexican people. So you get the point. All right. That's what they need. So let me tell you what has happened. What about the African-American people? Okay. What about the African people? All right. What do we need? I don't know if you guys noticed that. With the African people, we are the only culture in the world where we eat everybody food. Our table is like a feast. We eat in everybody food. We eat the Chinese food. There's a Chinese restaurant, about three or four of them on every block in our side of town. Let's just keep it real. And most of the time, the Chinese people do not eat the food that we buy. They eating some soup on the side or something that's a little bit more healthier back in the kitchen while we buy what we buy. They also, we eat the, we also eat the cheese, the American cheese, the hot dog, the hamburger, that's the urine people. And we eat the Medi uh, Mediterranean, we got the olive oil, we eat the Italian, like we Italo uh, around here, we eat the spaghetti, we eat the pasta, we eat everybody food. We eat everybody food. But what about our food? Where our food come from? So... If we are the only culture that eats everybody else's food, we eat everybody else's minerals, but we come from a different genetic. Think about it. We come from a totally different genetic. We come from Africa. I mean, we're not physically from Africa, but our genetics, our ancestors is from our makeup. It's from the rainforest. Just think about it. But this is something that was never considered until Dr. Sebi discovered it. And he called it the African Biomineral Balance. Because that's the one thing that we have not discussed or been discovered. Because you know why? Hundreds of years ago, it is what it is. Slavery exists, we all know it. When we had to enter, in, to, in, enter through the door of no return in slavery, let's just keep it real, okay? They didn't take our food with us. They didn't take none of our food with us. We was packed in the, in the, in the ship. We was, you know, enslaved. We was brought over here, but they did not bring our food. So what we had to do, we had to eat the straps. Let's just keep it real. We had to eat their straps, and we all learned how to eat the food that they ate, their minerals, what kept their body up. Totally eliminated what we needed to eat and our minerals that we needed to keep our body up. To the point you can look in these same studies, all these studies I did, which is reputable companies that it come from, and you look up the African American diet, we have deficiencies. Uh, we have health problems. We have a high rise in diabetes and we sick and cancer. Not saying other races don't have cancer and not sick, but we have it more than others. Why? Because we are totally moved away from the minerals and the foods that we need to sustain our own body. Totally reprogrammed because one, they needed to control us. They needed to have control over us in order for us to do what they needed to do. Why did they bring us over here? Because they needed us to work. The power that we have. We are from the rainforest. Probably some of the smart, no, we are some of the smartest humans out there, but in order to control us, they had to dumb us down. And how do I know that? This is over 20 years of studies right here. Let me put it up so you can see. Breaking the curse of Willie Lynch. Let me tell you something. One of the very, very first rules in the Willie Lynch, and this is I studied and I studied in my own family, my own community. I studied for everybody around me for the last 20 years, comparing what I read and what I studied in these books to what I see and what I live in my life. And this is how I know it to be fact. Okay. One of the main, you know, uh, instructions that they gave when they brought us over here was this. Senator Henry Berry in 1832, while addressing the Virginia House of Delegates, 
We have extinguished every avenue which light could not enter into the mind of the black slave. Let me repeat that. 1832, while addressing the Virginia House of Delegates, we have extinguished every avenue by which light could enter into the mind of the black slave. They want to keep you in the dark. They don't want you to see shit. You don't need to know. Because if you know, then we might lose everything. If you are aware, then they prob they're scared. Let's just keep it real. And they have, I mean, maybe they should have the right to be scared. Scared to the point because if you know and you uplift yourself and you get your power back and you get your berries back, okay, and you get your herbs back and you connect to God and you become so powerful, then maybe they lose everything. All these years, four hundreds and hundreds of years, maybe they lose everything. And you want to know how I know that to be true? Because Tom Obama got in his darn chair. These people then got pissed off, mad. Okay, they mad. We're gonna lose everything. We're not gonna have nothing. They're winning everything. They took over the TV. They did this and they did this, and we're not gonna have nothing. If you don't believe me, ask a Trump supporter. Mad as hell, scared that they're gonna lose everything. Let's just keep it real. Let's just make it just just to make sense. Okay? Because if you turn on the light and you, be, you return to your natural state of being and you get the necessary minerals that you need to sustain your best life, this is how we can come out of the mess that we in. And this is what Dr. Sabi is trying to relate to us and tell us based on his stories based on his lectures, based on the videos that I've watched and the books that I've read in regards to some of the things that he is trying to explain to us. This is the African culture. Dr. Sebi is the Moses of the African culture. And he has figured out the hidden code that our genetics is totally different from everybody else. And why does it have to be bad that our genetics is it? it? It's okay for the Chinese to be different from the Mediterranean. It's okay for the Mediterranean to be different from the European. Then why, why do you feel like it's a problem that Africans can't be different? We just different. We come from the rainforest. So this is why if you fasting and you taking your herbs and you eating alkaline meals that have a pH level of 7.0 or 7.5 or, or higher that you can sustain and you can have a whole lot of energy just like that. Because at the end of the day, we are programmed and used to eating the stuff that we eat, but it's not our minerals. It's not what we need. They need the steak. We don't. It's a, it's, I mean, what is it doing to us? So let me get into that. What is all the food that we're eating? Because we eat everybody food really, really doing to us. Well, what it's doing to us is breaking down our mucous membrane. Everybody has mucus up here in your head. The mucus covers the brain to keep it protected, you know, up here. By the time you eat acidic foods that go against your genetic makeup, that mucus begins to break down. And when that mucus begins to break down and start flowing all through your system, start covering up the cells, deplete your oxygen, now you got heart attacks, you got diabetes, or whatever the case may be, because whatever that mucus is landing in your body, that's your problem. If the mucus is draining in your sinus, you got bronchitis. If the mucus is coming into your vagina area, you got endometriosis or you got a yeast infection, you're smelling something. I mean, let's just keep it real. If the mucus is falling down in your legs and your knees or in your hip, you got to have a hip replacement. First time the doctor going to tell you, or you can't walk too much, you can't walk too long because it's all in your joints and your joints swelled up. I mean, whatever the mucus is landing is what your disease is. But at the end of the day, it is mucus. We are filled with mucus all the way down from your childhood. Think about it. You remember we was all had to go to get wick? Maybe not everybody, but we had to get wick and we get the, the canned milk when we was babies. Our mamas gave us the Infamil in the can and, and gave us all the milk and we loaded the babies up with milk, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. 
And when you loaded the babies up with milk, you would just see snot just running down the baby, just running just everywhere, just snot all in the baby, just coming out the baby everywhere. Mucus running out the baby nose. That girl need to wipe her baby now. This snotty baby. That is so nasty. Where do you think this mucus is coming from? Because according to Dr. Sabi, Black people does not digest milk and dairy products at all very well. It's acid to us. It's not our minerals. So from time you a baby and you got this baby snotty nose running all over the place, you already breaking down the mucus with dairy products and things that does not sustain to our life and what we need to live and to sustain. Let's just keep it real. I mean, just think about it for a moment. Let's just think about it for a moment. So this is coming from when we was babies, y'all. This is coming from way before when. It's just that until Dr. Sabi had his moment and God blessed him with the drive and the, and the education and the necessary knowledge to let us know about it, okay, and yet we so in tune and so in, in program to the food. Man, I need to have my fried. I'm it's t hell. In Chicago, they eating the spaghetti and the fried chicken. That's one meal. Shout out to my shout outs. Yes, honey. Spaghetti and the fried chicken. Acidic foods, guys. It is breaking down our mucous membrane. We can't function properly. Even in this same book, it tells you the number one way to control a group of people is through the food that they eat. Because if they get addicted to it, it is nothing you can do about it. And if they get addicted to it, they get sick, they die slow. And by the time you get old, you can't do nothing. You can't do nothing by the time you get 30. And nowadays, how is it that back in the hunters and gatherers days, these people, according to the word, lived hundreds of years old. And we're not around here dying at 30, 40, 50 years old. I mean, no, I mean, this, this, this can't happen like this. We are at war. We at war. And y'all don't care how many people get killed and die and how frustrated we is. Because see, what it is, is y'all thought we was free for a long time. Y'all thought we was free, slavery over. I said it myself. I ain't from them days. I'm, I was born here in America. I'm not African, and they don't have nothing to do with me. Well, rude awakening, because right here, guys, it will tell you that if they follow the method in this book, that it, the method will last, and this is a psychological method to control a group of people. And it says in the book that this will last a minimum of 300 years. A minimum of 300 years. You know when the 300 years was? 2012. The same year Trayvon Martin was killed. 2012. And my friends know when Trayvon Martin got killed and Zimmerman got the not guilty thing, I said to myself, now these folks is going to realize that their plan is still in effect. And we have been going through a whirlwind since then. So now you know she ain't died. Shit's still going on. And in order for us to effectively and officially move forward as a people, we got to start with our health first. Because you can't fix nothing. You can't build nothing. You can't live your best life unless you have the proper minerals that you need so you can live the life you was born to live. Time you was born into the earth. God had already had a plan for your life. But you're so reprogrammed that you can't tap into your to what it is that you have to do because your mucus is flooded, you're sidetracked, you're mad, you're angry about everything, and you don't love yourself enough. Because when you love yourself enough, that means you can love everybody. But you can't love yourself enough until you get healthy. You cannot love yourself enough until you straighten up the inside. Tell you all the time you are what you eat. What you eat is how you talk. What you eat is what you think. What you eat is how you feel, period. When you lose weight, you go in the gym and you lose weight and you get to your ideal weight. You feel sexy. You want to put on your best dress. You want to get your nails done and nobody can't tell you nothing. That's because you love yourself. It was taken from us. Everything that we needed, our minerals have been completely wiped away from us. But we're getting it back. Because even in the word, 
Okay, even in the word, in the book of Deuteronomy, it does state that we will return. We are in the very beginning of the end of racism right now, whether you believe it or not. Most of y'all won't see it, but we in it. So you got to prepare yourself. But you have to first prepare yourself with the food that you eat. They need the steak. We don't. We are from the rainforest. We're not from the polar bear area. We cannot expect for the polar bear, okay, to come tell us over here in the rainforest what we need to sustain when they're not where we from. So what do you have to do about it? What in the world do we have to do about it? One, let me explain, and I'm going to wrap it up in a few minutes. Before I even get to the point of what we have to do about it, I want to give you a testimony about something, how serious this is. Last week after I did my video, a young lady reached out to me and she said, Honey, can I call you? I said, Yes, ma'am, please do. So she called me and she said to me, she said, Listen, my mom, she's 85 years old. And last year she was diagnosed with cancer. I think it was uh, pancreas or something like that, cancer. And my mom has always been healthy and she's always been a health nut. Yes, for you health nuts. Oh, I exercise, honey, and I eat right. And um, I ain't got to worry about that because um, I eat right, I exercise, I'm in shape, I'm healthy. I'm getting my necessary proteins in. Um, and yeah, I'm eat right, so I don't have to worry about that. You ever wonder why people still healthy, but they still ended up with cancer? How was that possible? So, mom, for a good little while... <clears throat> it says I'm breaking up, so I'm going to try to keep going. Mom, for a good little while, went through a period where she was eating a lot of meat. So last year, she was diagnosed with cancer. So the lady told me, she said, Oh my God, I thought I was going to lose my mom last night. It was so bad. And she was just in pain and, and she just couldn't manage. And, you know, just she just had this stuff just coming out of her like a whole lot of mucus. I said, that's what it does. She's giving her the tease. I said, that's what it does. And she said, and, um, and I just don't know what to do. I said, is she drinking water? She said, that's another problem. She drinks, she just, I have a hard time giving her water. And if I give her the water, I got to give her cold water. I got to get her ice. Because we think we need ice in our water. No, you don't. You need warm water, warm temperature water, so that way when the water goes through your body, it can flush things out of your body. If you drink ice or drinking something cold, cold is hard. It's going to freeze. It's going to get stuck. So I said, tell you what you do. Before, first of all, get your mom some eternal water. Go to the store, get a couple cases of eternal water. When mom start drinking that eternal water, you're not going to have to tell mom to drink that water no more. I said, put the water in the refrigerator two hours before it's time for her to drink it. So when she touched the bottle, the bottle is cold. But she need to drink that water. She need to drink two or three liters every day. So give her, give her that water. But as far as her, you know, um, you know, vomiting and, you know, having to fit and getting the mucus out, that's just something that she has to go through. Like crack, like sugar, guys. I mean, it's like, it's like crack. It's like drugs. It's very hard to get off of it. And you have to go through a withdrawal process. So long story short, I reached out to her. I said, hey, how was mom? She said, oh, my God. Last night was really bad. But mom had a glut of stuff that she was throwing up, and it was just coming out of her so bad. But when I woke up this morning, mom was feeling so good. Mom had not got up, fixed her breakfast, cleaning up, and drinking her water by herself. And now mom is like, you know what? I don't know where all this stuff is coming from that's coming out of me. I need to drink my water. And she's ready to drink her teas. 85. We should not be walking around here worried about heart congestion at 25. Okay? We should not be around here dropping dead and got to have a hip replacement at 35. Hell, at 60, we need to still be dancing and looking our sexy and living our best life. We are some powerful people. And the power is within you. But until you discover it, ain't nobody else going to discover, discover it. So this is why you must consider and try the African bio-mineral balance. It's your minerals. It's what you need, not what they need. It's what you got to do to live your best life. Because if that happened, these four things will happen. And how it's going to happen. One... 
You need to learn your foods. Learn the foods that you need to eat. Foods with seeds. Come on, guys. Nothing grows without a seed. Hell, you even here because of a seed. Nothing grows without a seed. The minerals that we need as black people is carbon, hydrogen, iron, oxygen. That's our minerals. We need a high dosage of iron. That's why it's recommended that we have the sea moss and the sarsaparilla and, and um, burdock. These seeds are filled with iron because that's our minerals of what we need. Okay? So you need to learn the foods that grow with seeds. Check the Dr. Sebi list. He's telling you the food that we need because all the food that was on that list has a seed in it. The seed grow, the food grow from the seed, the seed drop back on the ground and it comes back up again. That's carbon. And re Nature does not need man to alter nothing. Because when something is created or something is a GMO, then that means they binding something together. In order to do that, you need a binder. And a binder is all, always chemical. It's always something that is a chemical, guys. We only need what is natural. So learn the foods that you need to eat. Try some of the foods. I post this beautiful waffle and chicken today with the mushroom and the, and the, um, and the waffle. I'm going to buy me a waffle maker and I'm eating that on Saturday night for real. Everything that we like to eat, we can recreate it with our food. If you're not in the Akali Vegan Girl group, you need to make sure that you get into that group right now. Because I have so many ideas and so many recipes with same food, the Chinese food that you like, you can make it an alkaline way. The, the Mediterranean food that you like, you can make it in the alkaline way. Whatever food that you like, it is a way that you can make it in the alkaline way. So learn your foods a little bit at a time. Number two, we got to cleanse ourselves. We got to get all this mucus out of us. We got to get that shit out of us. We cannot live, can't think, can't sustain with nothing filled with mucus just running out of us. Get it out. Have to get it out, guys. Cleanse ourselves. And we have to slowly wean ourselves one at a time. Don't be trying to jump in and just try to go all the way. Just bam, okay, I'm in and that's it. Don't work like that. Because you'll depress yourself just a little bit at a time. Replace one thing with the other one at a time. Okay? Then, after you cleanse yourself, you do the fast 21 day, 30 day, fast through the seasons like I said in my last, last video. Then you need to build our bodies back up. Invest some, something in the, in the Dr. Save Cell Food compounds. You got the Bonjou stuff that's for good for ADHD. If a child can, can concentrate, run around, give him something natural from Dr. Save. He got it. He got the bromide that has the bladder rack and the sea moss on it to keep your bones strong. All that you need. So use the Dr. Sebi compounds. And last not but least, once you have cleansed yourself, you can gradually change your food, you can build your body back up. It is a requirement. You have a responsibility to make sure that you go on that website and I'll post it a little later and you need to become an advocate. Become a SABI advocate. Join the movement. Because you know what it does? When I make my contribution to the advocacy program with Dr. SABI and I pay a dollar, five dollars, it don't even matter what the amount it is and you pay into it. The money that I pay going to somebody else. And when somebody else pay, it goes to somebody. It doesn't go to a particular person. It goes to each other. So we can support each other. And when you get money from the advocacy program deposited in your account, reach out and get some herbs to somebody else. Create something in your community where you can push. You remember like Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, 4-H Club? We can have our own Boy Scout, Girl, Girl Scout 4-H Club. Teach the children chess. Take them to go fishing, hunting. Put some gardens in your backyard. Monsanto got a whole list of foods that's about to come out. They coming out with some apples on y'all in a minute. I'll post that later. They coming out with some squash on y'all. Y'all don't even realize how y'all not finding no watermelons with seeds in it. Herloom tomatoes is not real tomatoes. I mean, I, I look into all this like they coming out with a whole other list of foods that is coming to a grocery store near us. And we wonder why we getting sick because we so used to eating day shit. So. 
I hope this answered your question of why you need to start or consider the African environmental balance. Because this is just common sense, like real stuff that we never considered because it was hidden from us and we didn't know. But now you know. And now that you know, you have to do something about it. Because if you don't, let me tell you what's going to happen. Ten years from now, you're going to suffer. You are going, it could be less than ten years from now. But if you're not giving your body the necessary minerals that you need, and you're filling your body with acid all the time, and the mucus is just running down in your body, covering up your cells, you can't use, lose no weight, you can't get... You can't do what you want to do. You can't go on a cruise. You can't go on a trip because your leg hurt, your feet hurt, your body hurt. You got the diabetes. You might black out. The eczema, the seizures, all that, okay, will not allow you to live your best life. So when you change that, we can change the world. But we can't do nothing with the world until we help ourselves. So you can protest it. You can get mad. You can do whatever you want to do. But until we change this right here, and depend on each other as people and be there for other as people, then it's not going to change. So get these herbs. I sell the herbs. Some other people sell the herbs. And what I'm noticing too, you got some people out here that selling these herbs with some outrageous prices. The most reasonable prices I have seen is the ones that I have and also what or Eric Joseph have. But I see some herbs that is outrageous. And you know what happens with that? They be, you begin to take the we, I'm sorry, begin to take the me out of the we. And when you forget about the people, Dr. Sebi created this because he wanted to move the people. He wanted to move the African culture so that way we can identify who we are and start living for us, with us, by us. But you have some people that have come in and they begin to take the me out of the we. And time you do that, we lose. We got to stick together. We got to stick together. We got to learn that. And we're not going to be able to stick together if we all unhealthy and die. Because the first thing on our mind is us getting healthy. A word about our doctor bills. And you can say, man, this just don't make no sense. And I'm not going to just do myself like that and get hungry and all this right here. It's all in your mindset, guys. I'm telling you, it is in your mindset. You have been conditioned to think and believe this way. You need iron in your body if you're African. If you're from an African descendant, you need iron in your body. You need oxygen. You need carbon. You cannot get carbon from nowhere but from a plant. You need everything that has a seed in it. If it does not have a seed, it's created with something. I put the Monsanto movie up. If you didn't watch it, you need to watch it. Because these people is controlling us for real. They still controlling you. Because you want to know why? You, we even got to the point that some of us have to pay to live. How in the world do you pay to live? Because you can't sustain life unless you're taking your blood pressure medicine. You can't sustain life unless you're taking your insulin. You can't do nothing in life unless you have that medication. So yes, they're still controlling you. So this is the time that Dr. Sebi has given us the knowledge that we need to take control of our life. To take ownership of what we have already created for 400 years. They needed us to come over here and build and do the work. They got to have workers. Every business owner has to have a worker. So they picked us to do it. So we already created this shit. So now it's just time for us to take ownership of it. Whoever going to be the president is going to be the president, but you got to be your own president first. So this is why you must consider the African biomineral balance. It's way more than what you thought it was. This is your kids. This is your life. This is our culture. And this is where our kids is going in the future. And if you don't get it right now, you're going to get it later. You might have to be going through some hard times. You might have to be going through some amputation of the leg because you got gouts and sugar so bad before you realize it. You can't be judged for what you don't know. And you didn't know before tonight. But if you won't here, you know now. So I encourage you. Because Dr. Sebi is our Moses. And we got a whole lot of uh, disciples. Because every time they kill one, they ain't doing nothing but creating hundreds of more. Because we rising. And we coming together. 
why they falling apart if you really think about it. Look beyond the surface. You got these folks out here overdosing with kids in the car. They overdosing everywhere. The police can't control them. They shooting up everything while we over here building out, out of our misery. We opening our eyes and we joining together. But in order for it to work, in order for it to make it happen, we got to get healthy first. We got to get to our rainforest. We from the rainforest. We ain't from the Arctic. We ain't no damn polar bears. We need berries and we need leaves and herbs. Because that's our minerals. So now you know it. So I love you. I appreciate you for spending all this time. Sometimes I be apprehensive about doing these long videos. But you know what God told me about that? If somebody don't have the time to sit down and look at these videos and listen to his message, then you're not ready to change. Because it ain't easy. Everything quick goes quick. Nothing worth having is easy. So if my video is too long, it's long for a reason. Because maybe it's just a test for you to sit here to see how long you have the ability to sit with yourself. Okay? And sit with God and listen to God. There's a difference between praying and meditating. When you pray, you tell God what you want. You tell God what you're thankful for. You tell him how you feel. Now, when do you just hush and listen? That's what meditation is. Meditation is when you sit and you listen to what God is saying to you. You know that voice, girl, why you did that? Don't do that, girl. Call him. Don't call him. That voice right there. If you sit with God in meditation, pure silence, don't ask for nothing. He going to take you where you need to go. When you cleanse your system and you become clear about who you are, what you are, and you're giving yourself the necessary minerals that you need, he's going to give you the resources that you need. He's going to take you where you need to take. You're not even going to have to look for it. Because as you can see right now, a couple years ago, I told my two, my two best buddies, Sierra and Alexis, I said, man, I don't know how to do these video things. This video thing is not for me. Y'all handle that right there because that's not my cup of tea. But after I finished that 21-day fast, guys, I'm telling you, I feel like it's just so empowering. It's just like empowering. I don't even watch TV. I read all day. I study. I was up to 3 o'clock in the morning watching Death to Seven videos. And when I watch these videos again, I don't take what people say. That's why you see I got all these papers, all these books. I got tons of books, tons of books. You see this one right here? That's another one y'all need. The Development uh, Psychology to the Black Child, okay? True, pos true Prosperity. I have books, Heal Thyself. This is where I get a lot of the fast from. Um, Coco Chanel, I hope you're seeing this. I read, I study. That's what I do. Okay, that's what I do because I have this very peculiar connection with God where I just pray all the time and I say, God, use me as you make sure you share, make sure you uh, explain to everybody else what we need to do. One, we need to learn our foods. Try it. Try something different with the foods and the minerals that we need. Two, cleanse yourself. Start to fast. If you haven't chose your day of atonement, whatever day you're born. If you was born on a Monday, Monday is your day of atonement. No food. Try it. Okay? After you cleanse yourself, you build your bodies up. Invest in the L.A. office. Dr. Savvy products in the L.A. office. Because there's a, and, and join these groups. This is, we got some real disciples in here. We got disciples like Swazet Carlos. Uh, Zai Melakai, Azi Melakai, uh, Yada, David Banner. These are disciples. These are people out here that's just trying to voice it to let you know that we rising. And in order for us to do it, you got to rise first. So, um, y'all be blessed. And until next week, y'all keep following me. I'm coming up with the water video. It's going to be Saturday night where I'm going to test the waters. If there's a particular water that you drink and you want to know what to test at, you need to message me, post it somewhere or something. So that way I can get that water for the water video on Saturday night. For those of you who have ordered your herbs, uh, all the pre-orders are going out on Saturday. 
and I have some more orders that will go out on next week. I already had to order a whole nother set of herbs just that fast. And this is another reason why I sell my herbs at the price that I do. Because it's not important for me to make the money. It's important for me that we heal our people. And I need as much people as possible to get these herbs in your system. Because what we're missing is in them herbs. We are from the rainforest. We need our own minerals. Stop eating everybody else shit. And let's start eating our own. So be blessed. Shalom. I love y'all. And y'all have a beautiful, beautiful week. And a more beautiful night.